All right, so this is going to be an extremely quick demonstration of what the NuGet plugin can do. As we're looking at the scene, you can see that I have the script editor open. Uh, this is basically so that I can see as things are progressing. I also have a basic directional light. Uh, ray trace shadows are turned on. Uh, nothing overly complicated here. We are going to want to render with mental ray. We're going to go ahead and turn the overall quality down to 0.1 just for demonstration purposes. Now the overall goal is to demonstrate how we, how quickly we can do this effect. So I'm going to shoot for doing this effect in under five minutes. So that's going to be my goal. And I'm going to set up a timer so that I can keep an eye on things as well. And we're going to see if we can uh, get this done in under five minutes. Okay, let's go ahead and get things started. So first thing you want to do is go ahead and click the Nuket uh, button. Change the sections to 30. We'll do that for the demonstration purposes. We'll also change the particle scale to 50. Now, I'd probably run the sections higher for my own project, but for demonstration purposes, 30 is enough. If you look in the script editor, you can see that some things are happening and our script is running. Our elements should pop out here in a second, and there they are. We'll also want to go ahead and run the body. And once again, you can see the script editor running, and now we have some more ele elements. Let's go ahead and bake the incandescence and tweak some of the incandescence properties. This is going to affect how things glow and where the glow is at and how hot things are burning in certain areas. We'll also want to go ahead and run the ground cloud. Make sure you click the ready set button. You'll get an error, but go ahead and ignore that. Uh, you still need to click the button. And then click the make them stick button. That'll make sure that the particles stick to the uh, the ground plane or the ground element as it's deformed. Shader backing is also helpful. And go ahead and clicking it at this time is is a good thing. I'll go ahead and apply a few artistic choices. This is more about a demonstration on how quickly this plugin can work, but we'll go ahead and look at a few artistic choices. So applying a 3D volume noise can be nice. And then feel free to go ahead and tweak other things. You can add lattices to this. You can add all sorts of different things. You can sculpt on this, and I did that as well on my project. Uh, tweak the texture deformer properties to get a nice look to it, something that fits for you. Let's go ahead and add a lattice to the body uh, as another demonstration of some artistic choices that you can make to affect shape and overall look. I like to use texture deformers and lattices and the sculpt tool and affecting vertices and all that sort of stuff with each other so that you can get an overall look that you like. So these are a couple quick demonstrations on some things that you can do. We'll keep going ahead and, and tweaking some things, get an overall look. Once again, we're not really trying to tweak the ground for this demonstration, but definitely everything we're doing for everything else can be applied to the ground as well. We will want to go ahead and change some of the uh, particle attributes so we can tweak the particle scale of the head. We can make those bigger. We can make those smaller. We can also do that for the body or the, uh, the ground cloud as well. It's all about what you want for your final look. As you look at your attributes, you also have attributes for how fast things are flowing. how random the scale is of the particle, the overall scale, and then also the V and U. You can get some different scales between the particles, how different in scale the particles are. We can also increase the sections for the head, the body sections, the ground subdivision, which increasing that can also be helpful because it can reduce any kind of popping that you might get and that type of stuff. This is where you can make some decisions artistically. I'm trying to give you a few ideas 
of some directions that you can go in regard to this. Now when you look over here we have a cloud button and spear button under each one of these. I work with the spears because this gives me a better visual representation of what's going on. But when it becomes render time you're going to want to go ahead and change this to cloud. So go through each one of these and change the head cloud, the body cloud, and the ground cloud. So that's what's going to render. So let's go ahead and get a quick look at what we're getting. And I'm also going to consider the basics of this being done now in under five minutes. Once again, we will want to make more artistic decisions and take some time for that. But the point of this video was also to demonstrate how quickly things could be done. So in looking at my timer, it looks like I'm right at about four and a half minutes. So we've gotten to this point, uh, a completed mushroom cloud in four and a half minutes. I'll go ahead and continue to tweak this just a little bit to demonstrate a couple other properties. But point being, through the use of this plugin, you can achieve this effect very quickly. Okay, so we have a basic render, as you can see. Now, one of the things this plugin has done for you, if you open up the hyper shader, you're going to see a surface shader. So if we graph this network, you're going to see a shader that has been built by this plugin. Now the shader uses a blend colors to blend two different Lamberts and then plugs that into a surface shader. Now we have kind of a hot version and a cold version so to speak. So whenever cracking appears you can go ahead and use this and you can even animate this to back the fluid shader that is shading the particles. So anywhere you see cracking you can apply this shader and it will fill in behind because and because it's a surface shader it's not going to be affected by lighting so it's not going to get too dark or too bright or anything like that. So you can also duplicate this shader so if you want something assigned that's different to the body or something that's different to the head or something that's different to the ground cloud you can do that. Now when you look at this, if you look at the glow angle, you will notice that it's set at negative 90. That's kind of lower, but one thing that we can do is we can, if we go more towards negative 70, I think is a good area, uh, or somewhere around in there, this is going to put the glow area up a little higher. But as you notice, if we change it afterwards, this has affected uh, the way things look, but that's no big deal because we can go ahead and change the position of our object. And then keep in mind too that when you're trying to come back and work visually that changing things back to the spheres can be helpful. We can go ahead and tweak things like the particle scales just remember whenever you're tweaking the mushroom head or the mushroom body that you are going to have to click the refresh buttons for each one of those. So if you change the speed or the scale or anything like that, after you're done, go ahead and click the refresh. Now when you're looking at the body sections, eight, there are eight streams of particles that are flowing up. But once again, this is a creation attribute, so once it's set, it's, it's kind of set. Also, the sections for the head is only set at 30. I think for my project, I was like at 80. But keep in mind, you can use whatever number you want to and just affect scale and all that type of stuff to work together. This is artistic. This is where the artistic choices come into play. Just keep in mind you need to, um, anytime you change any of these attributes under the head or the body, you need to click the refresh button. We've talked about the incandescence and the ground cloud. Another thing to mention is in regard to the fluid shader. So the fluid shader has been assigned to the particles, and I believe the fluid one is assigned to both the head and the body. But we can double check that by going into the hyper shader, and if you click this button, you will see the fluid that is assigned to this particle. So you can see that's uh, fluid one. 
same thing here if you select the body so once again the fluid one shader is assigned to the head and the body and the fluid two shader is assigned to the ground cloud the reason that I did this is because I added some and animated some glow on the fluid one so as things go up into the mushroom cloud you're going to want it to burn in regard to the mushroom cloud head and in regard to the mushroom cloud body and so if we look at the incandescence this is where things are burning and keep in mind there are artistic decisions that you can make here too if you wanted things to glow green you could make things glow green and you can you can affect and you can affect where things are you can also look at textures you can change textures you can change frequency and amplitude there's a lot of artistic decisions that you can make in this area you can also change the texture type you can change the overall look of this by affecting some of these areas as well there are some things that we've done through the lighting but there are some things that you can do as well one thing that I have done here in this plugin is to use a fake ambient lighting now now if the ambient brightness was at zero anywhere that the directional light was not lighting up would be completely black now we could use global illumination or final gather to bounce some light back into these areas but the calculation time for that would be pretty extensive here we have a very nice cheat where we can put ambient brightness and color type back into the cloud where the lights not directly hitting it's a pretty cool way to get quick render times and get some diffuse back into the shadowed areas of the cloud. Another thing to mention, if we set our time frame back to frame one, our particles will disappear. That's not what we want. We want our particles to start and be present on frame one. So how do we do that? Well, first off, if we look at the top here, we'll see these different attributes. Turn them all off except for the particles. Let's go ahead and drag and select all but the ground particle. Don't select the ground particle because these will re-proc uh, on frame one every single time. We need to go to Field, Solvers, Initial State, and Set for Selected. This will now save the particle state for frame one. Now, if we rewind the ground particle disappears and you'll also see a slight pop from frame one so I usually don't record or I usually do record frame one but in compositing I just toss it um, however you want to do it you could start rendering at frame two though as well that'd probably be okay now Maya 2015 looks a little different as far as the menus we need to do the same thing turn off all the attributes but the particles select the head and body particles now go to Solver's Initial State and Set for Selected. So it's the same thing, it's just uh, that there are different places in the menu. And now you can see things start at frame one. Okay, so we're going to take one last look at a couple things that we can do to animate things like glow. So as the explosion occurs things are going to be really hot so if we look at this image it looks pretty cool but at the beginning we're going to want this to be pretty hot so how, how do we animate how hot this is well first off let's set these keyframes for where these are when things are cooled down but when things are hot we would go back to like frame one and if you use the middle mouse button we won't have to reset the whole animation at this point but what we can do is go ahead and change the position of these color swatches and key their position at frame one and now we have different positions for these different colors this is going to affect how this looks at this point in time now if we go back to our time 
at 635, you will see that the animation has cooled down. So it will cool between these two frames. But let's go ahead and take a quick look at what this might look like if it were hotter. So we have this image that is fairly cool looking. But let's take a look now that we've changed these color swatches to what this would look like. Now you can see how our glow has changed and these properties have been animated. Now, because there are some areas where you can see the cracks between the particles, that's where you would use your shader to back the particles, back it with a color that's not affected by light. So that's why this shader has been created. And keep in mind too that this is an animated uh, or an animatable property as well. So you could you could keyframe this at a cooler property when things are supposed to be cooler and you could also key this to be a hotter property when things are hotter. Now we've taken a look at how we can animate the shader and the glow and that type of stuff but what about the overall look, the growing of it? First off we would want to go ahead and delete history. Now at this point with histories deleted we could go ahead and duplicate this object and we could go ahead and add other at artistic attributes to this as well such as a lattice or other texture deformers or we could sculpt on this. Now one thing that I like to do and I'll show you real quickly with the lattice I tend to think that these things should not be quite as open at, at the top. So I like to go ahead and close this off. I use a combination of a lattice and I'll also sculpt on this. For the sake of time, I'm not going to grab vertices and pull these in to close this, close this off, but I will show you the lattice. Now, if we use a blend shape, we can then turn this off and then we will have a blend shape tab on our primary object. Now this is also keyable. Now you'll want to go ahead and change this to world so so that it will animate to the position of the other deformed object. And then you could go ahead and do the same thing for the body. You can grow it, make it longer, you can use lattices, you can use textures, deformers, you can use all sorts of things to animate the overall shape and look as well. So here we've taken a look at how to animate shading properties and also how to animate overall look and shape of the mushroom cloud. Cheers and thanks for watching.